Uh, Matt Brown from Extra Points. It's a newsletter you should get if you are interested in the workings of college, college athletics. And you have written... I, this was not my intent to talk about this, but I'm going to ask you this yeah. question. You've written 7,000 words on the video game? Yeah, yeah. I think it was uh, two weeks ago I went down to Orlando to play it. Uh, <laughs> I got a chance to interview a couple of the developers, and God bless the Internet, right? Because <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not a video game reporter. <laughs> right. like, I'm glad to have written about this topic. I'm interested in it, too. But the... The, the fan interest and in every tiny bit of minutia about this game yeah. is so massive that I – listen, if like an AD or an agent tries tried to DM me in the past week, there's no way I saw it because <laughs> I've got 700 DMs in there for people like, hey, appreciate all these words, not paying to read them. Here's a question I have about shadows. Here's the question I have. Does the concession stand at Louisiana Monroe blue or green? Thanks. I'll take my answer off the air. And like, you know <laughs> – I'm doing my best to, to, to meet this need. Uh, I don't, you know, it's it's, it's a process. Um, unbelievable! I'm surprised you answered my DM. Uh, Matt Brown is joining us here from Extra Points at Matt Brown EP on Twitter. I think the the last time we spoke, I had a one question about it. I just like alternate uniforms and things like that. But we're I don't I don't want to get into that. Let's get into House okay. versus the NCAA and the settlement, which for those people who don't know will allow schools now to directly pay players. So I just want to get to the basics of this, which is, and the the thing is, it's part penalty and it's part forward thinking, which in and of itself is a departure for the NCAA. What will the impact be on, let's just go NIL? Uh, Because theoretically, it shouldn't have an impact on NIL, but because I think schools should probably let those stay outside of their... Uh, of their umbrella, but what will be the impact of NIL? I, I do think there's going to be some impact, honestly, and, and that impact is probably going to differ a little bit from market to market. But the way that most NIL collectives are operating right now, whether you're at Carolina or Duke or Pitt or, you know, High Point, right. is you, you, are, you are disproportionately depending on donors, to give money that's independent of any commercial you know, activity to, to either encourage people to stay or encourage people to, to transfer or, or join your program. And, and even from there, they're mostly heavily reliant on a small number of donors per program. And in a, pl- and, and a, and a place like a really competitive ACC basketball market right. and an SEC football market, some other places, I don't think it matters what the base salary or base stipend from the school is. People are so competitive that they'll give whatever it takes unless there's a CBA that tells them not to. Right. But I don't know if that's universal. I don't know if you're going to be able to go to the same, the the eight very rich people at Minnesota Mm -hmm. and hit them up for money if those football players are making hypothetically a base stipend of a hundred grand from the school. I think that some of those people will say, I'm not interested in giving there. I'd rather give my money someplace tax deductible. I'd rather give it to uh, to a right. facility or perhaps somewhere in the institution. And if that happens at just a handful of places, that will drive prices for talent down. Um, the NCAA is, is kind of leaking, although they haven't really you know, come out with the, the hard and fast concrete updates about how they want to do this yet. But they would like to go after more of these, of these collectives or to regulate this market a little bit more. And depending on what happens in Congress, depending what happens with uh, this lawsuit being enshrined, they might have a little bit more legal legal uh, wiggle room to actually enforce any of these things. They might they might not. It's it's uncertain, which is a long and terrible sports answer sports radio way of saying there's so many unknowns. Right. I, I I don't think it's going to be completely business as usual. Um, but there's going to be some collectives that still exist. Matt Brown is joining us from Extra Points at Matt Brown EP on Twitter. The interesting thing for me is that, first of all, this hasn't been approved yet, right? We, we're, yeah. we, we, we still have to get cross over that you know, obstacle, assuming it does get approved, because you alluded to the NCAA would still, they still want true NIL. They are, they are no closer to being able to police that tomorrow than they were yesterday or five years ago or 10 years ago. Uh, So why would they, why would they even try? Uh, Well, I mean, they want to try because their constituent groups are asking them to Uh, this, this current system right now, 
makes everything much harder for coaches. It makes everything much harder for ADs. Uh, we toss around the word unsustainable a lot, but you know, if, whether you're an AD or an agent or somebody that works in this world for a living, you know, the smart money is the uh, amount of money being thrown around for, for talent is going to go down. It's already going down in, in, the, in the football world. Mm. A lot of brands set their money on fire the first 18 months and began to claw things back a little bit. Um, and, and to the ability to regulate this market produces more predictability, more structure, more stability, and you can, you can, you can plan around it, which nobody really can right now. Um, there is a chance that when, or I, I should say if, because it very much isn't a sure thing, that this is all approved and codified, that there may be a, a little bit more wiggle room here. The other thing, the other bet the NCAA is really making is, hey, once we do this settlement, it's going to be easier for us to go to Congress and say, essentially, protect this settlement with law. And if Republicans win the White House and take back the Senate, um, they have a much higher you know, chance of being able to pull that off. All right. Th- th- this is where I push back because <laughs> uh, the, I don't believe that there's – I think they would think that there is a better chance. And I guess better chance is relative to no chance. Better yeah. chance at like 1% versus 0% of you being able to get something through Congress where you get enough people there that either A, have a clue what they're voting on, um, or B, being able to get enough people to agree uh, on something. Because I think that the voice of Brett Kavanaugh, of all people, I think resonates through everybody that how are you? how have you been getting away with this over the course of the last however many years? This seems illegal to me. I just don't know how you're going to convince Congress to do it. To me, this is something the NCAA has to just simply do on their own. Well, the problem is they can't really do it on their own anymore. And, and, and legitimately, even if the NCAA said, even if, you know, Bubba Cunningham goes and gives a press conference in a few hours that says, we're done pretending any of this is amateurism. Right. We're ready to negotiate. We're ready to start paying stipends. Let's get a CBA. They probably still need Congress to, uh, to uh, one, to go help push for some changes and and, and labor law definitions, so they can find some kind of cohesive negotiating body to, to sign a deal with across different states, uh, or, or to get some kind of federal protection of, of, of you know, who's going to be in that group and who isn't. The, the cynical bet, and I, I don't want this to sound overly partisan here on the radio, but okay. I, I think that the bet that's being made from the NCAA is, okay, let's say Trump wins again. We got 50, you got 53, 54 Republican senators, slightly larger Republican majority in the House. Right. We don't need everybody to agree. We need a couple of people who are already to, to lead committees who are already sympathetic to the NCAA's message. And they have that right now. Ted Cruz and Tommy Tuberville um, are, are, are you know, pushing to, to essentially protect what, what the NCAA has here and to claw back on uh, on this particular labor market, you only really need five or six of those people, and then you have to decide: uh, is this going to be the the hill that all of these other Democrats die on um, to to try and, and stop this? And the answer to that, I think, is no, because there's really only about twelve Democrats that really really care about it. And once, regardless of what Kavanaugh says, if individual lawmakers realize, hey, the flagship university in my district or in mm-hmm. my state is pushing for this, and if I codify this. I also smack down organized labor. Yeah, I think it's going to get passed by everybody, even, even if most people don't really understand it. Now, will Republicans sweep all three branches? Um, maybe, maybe not. I certainly wouldn't call that an overwhelmingly likely outcome. Um, we, we already know how difficult it is to get things passed when, when just through the, this current Republican caucus. The next right. cycle might be even crazier. But, but that's the bet. And it's, it's very difficult for the, for, I think for, for the NCAA period to figure, to figure out a long-term way out of perpetually being sued without the federal government, the, whether, whether that's a, a Democratic solution, a Republican solution, uh, a labor solution, an antitrust solution, there almost certainly does have to be something, as frustrating as that is for everybody. Yeah, w- what would be best for all parties, even for uh, the individual universities, would be a collectively bargained solution to this. Uh, but they seem to be completely against ever going down that route, even though that's the way to do this properly. But uh, I understand what you're saying, Matt Brown. Final thing. Schools yeah. schools that aren't in the power to, the SEC or the Big Ten, 
for those people who don't know what I'm talking about. They're in a very diff- different position because of the the penalty phase of this, because of the monies uh, that have to be paid out, the monies that have to be further set aside. And I guess you don't have to set them aside, but how many competitive uh, organizations are going to willingly put themselves significantly behind competitively by not providing salaries to uh, high-level athletes. I mean, how do you describe the difference between, uh, let, let's just use North Carolina from or NC State from the ACC and Georgia from the SEC? I think when it comes to complying with this settlement, I don't think there's a major difference. Um, North Carolina will probably have to make more painful yeah. cuts, but 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 not even necessarily toward towards athletes, right? Where where I think you're going to see that the cuts in, in the beginning are going to be in, in headcount. I think a lot of administrators are going to lose their jobs. A right. lot of people are going to have their salaries renegotiated, and then moving forward, there will be a clawing back or resetting of head coach and assistant coach salaries elsewhere. Like if if, if there's this much money being distributed. Kirby Smart's going to make his money, yep. but you're not going to have a world where the worst coach in the SEC makes six and a half, seven million dollars a year. Like it's going to more closely resemble the pay curve of the NFL. I'll tell you where there are huge differences. I want to use my words carefully here, but okay. I do think this is important for fans to understand. What this settlement has is is causing right now are even bigger tensions and fissures between all the leagues that don't sponsor football or that are sponsoring FCS football and everybody else. Because not only does the Big Sky and the Coastal Athletic and the SWAC and everybody else have to pay a disproportionate share of these penalties, but they weren't involved in the negotiating process. Right. And what is going to happen at NACTA next week and at conference meetings over the next couple of weeks and at hotel bars and in text messages between ADs and commissioners and presidents is that many of these leagues are going to at least have the conversation about what is the red line now for us wanting to continue to be a part of the NCAA. A lot of the conversation has always been about whenever the Big Ten and the SEC right. break away. That's one thing. But if you are High Point and you realize here, or if you're Campbell, and you realize that being a part of the NCAA means that you are going to be liable for continual legal exposure for North Carolina, and there's no way in the organization that you can vote to protect yourself from that, where is the red line for when you decide, you know what, this isn't worth the occasional 14-seat upset anymore? Yeah. Um, it's, and, 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 and look to do something else. I don't think we're there yet, but people are having that talk now. And that's not a crazy sports radio message board hypothetical. That's a real thing. Uh, that this settlement has really has really kind of you know brought to bear here the the anger like yeah. the, but uh, at, at that at that level is profound. Yeah, I mean, I, I I talked about it last week. If you're the Big East, if you're Villanova, uh, if you're Gonzaga, and you, you know, I mean you have nothing to do with <laughs> with what happened here. It's just a uh, it's a very difficult thing, and I think you you know even to bring it to the smaller conferences. Uh, it's probably even more glaring because they have no. Ch- they're, they're not gr- uh, gaining the uh, the monies from the NCAA, and of course, they're also uh, sending you less money for those schools that do well, uh, those conferences that do well in the basketball yeah. tournament. Matt Brown at Matt Brown EP. Uh, all right, go back play a video game, and <laughs> we, we we will talk to you again very soon, my man. I appreciate your time. You bet. Hey, listen, and I appreciate you for praying. Maybe we're the only radio host in the country that's going to call me right now and says, yeah, 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 I know, I know you played the video game. I want to talk about labor law. <laughs> God bless you for that. Right. Well, thank you very much. I'm not, that was a backhanded compliment, I think, but that's no, good. No, I, I mean that with deep love in my heart because, I listen, I'm happy to talk about physics animations too, but this is how I actually make my money. All right, <laughs> good. Well, yeah, I'm happy to talk about. Glad to help. Thanks, man. Take care. Okay, you bet. Take care.